Covering and Caring is the title of today's uh, exhortation as we continue our study on the big, this series of messages, Beginnings of the Hebrew Nation, Part 3, the book of Numbers. We have covered the book of Exodus, the book of uh, Leviticus, and now we are at the book of Numbers and at chapter 4 from verses 1 to 20. And we are looking at the work of the tabernacle. He, O.T. Spence, he made the good observation. He says that this is a very important distinction made in this section between the work of the priest in covering the items of the tabernacle when the camp was to dismantle and move and the work of the Levites in bearing the items of the tabernacle that had already been covered. So here you see that there was a very methodical, uh, there was a very methodical uh, plan uh, that was implemented. Uh, God himself gave the blueprint how Israel as a nation would uh, move in order to move the tabernacle, which is the, a picture of the presence of God with them, had to be systematically, orderly, in an orderly manner, taken down. And that is the reason, uh, that is the reason uh, for this section, whereby the Lord gave the instructions to Moses concerning how uh, they are to uh, prepare to, as a nation to move off. And there is a work that the, the priests would have to do uh, together with the Levites. And here it's uh, described for us uh, the work of the Levites in bearing the items of the tabernacle in which has been uh, covered uh, by the priest. And Sven says, once again we are reminded that the camp would pitch and remain at a place for a while, then the camp setteth forth. So there is an orderly, methodical way uh, by which uh, the, the, there is an orderly, methodical way by which the the nation of Israel is able to is able to move as a people under God. That's a very important uh, thought and message that we see here. There are people under God, and God provided them uh, the good laws, the instructions by which the nation can be organized so that they would be a witness to the nations of the world. And God himself will give these instructions so that nothing would be left out. Nothing important concerning uh, the way by which he would lead his people would be left out. You see in great detail uh, the Lord would uh, provide for us this information. Right? Once again, we are reminded that the camp would pitch, and then when it sets off, uh, they, they will move at the sound of the silver trumpets. And Spence, he says, let us notice what the priests were to do when the tabernacle was taken down to move forward at the leading of the Lord. The priests were to take down the inner veil of blue and the ark of the testimony and cover them first with a badger skin and then with a cloth holy blue. So you see that the ark of the covenant right, is going to be uh, specially uh, veiled, right, veiled in blue. All right? So that when they move, you would see uh, in a very conspicuous manner the Ark of the Covenant that represents the presence of God. Right? What is inside the Ark of the Covenant? We know it is the Aaron's rod that did not bud. 
Right? God uh, appointed uh, Aaron and his family to the priesthood. And inside there were the two tablets that God gave to Moses at, the, at, the, at Mount Sinai. Right? The law by which the children of Israel will, were, to, were to observe so that they may not sin against God. And also there was a pot of manna uh, symbolizing God's provision for his people. So you see, this was covered in blue when they would set off all the other items you would notice would be covered in badger's skin, right, hidden. But this, the Ark of the Testimony, is uh, covered in, with a badger's skin first and then with a cloth holy blue. That's in verse 6, which we saw. The priests were also to take the table of showbread and to cover it with blue and then cover it first with blue and then badger's skin ready for the journey. Right, so you see God provides a distinction uh, and, and it is for us to think and consider uh, and the Lord would explain to us also certain things that he does, certain things that he does, he does not explain. Right, but uh, here we learn to uh, simply trust him and obey his word. The priests were also to take the table of showbread and part C, the priests were to take the various utensils of the table of the showbread, the dishes, the spoons, the bowls, the covers, and spread them with a cloth of scarlet, and then the badger skin ready for the journey. And the priests were to take the candlestick and its part, tongs and snuff dishes, cleaners and trimmers for the wick, and oil vessels, and first cover them with blue and then badger skin. The priests were to take the golden altar, first cover it with blue, and then with the badger skin, verse 11. And the priests were to take all the instruments right, uh, and first cover them with blue, then with badger skin. And the priests were to take the brazen altar. Right, this is how they are to do. They are to remove the ashes and spread a purple cloth upon it with the vessels, censers, flesh hooks, shovers, and basins, and finally covered it with the badger skin. And so you, we would also notice uh, there are the f four uh, coverings uh, of the tabernacle that was also uh, prepared for the journey. Right? The four colored uh, uh, skin of the uh, cover of the tent of the tabernacle, the badger skin, blue, purple, and scarlet. So you see that there is a division of labor. Each one is assigned certain task. So when the priest has covered all the items, they are now free. Right, the, now another group of people would take over right, to carry the items. Right, so you would notice that uh, there is a division of labor, each one responsible for certain important task right, in the whole witness of God. Uh, uh, for Israel as a nation. Okay, so, uh, this is what we can observe. Right? And uh, so we said, we, we saw, uh, Span said, the ark carried an unusual distinction. The badger skin was beneath and the blue was the top covering. No other furnishings were, was carried on the march, on the journey with the outer covering of blue. In each of the other six groups, the outer covering is badger skin. In our mind's eye, he observed, he says, we can see Israel going through the wilderness on the move in proper arrangements of tribes, priests, and tabernacle, and in the midst of this singular spot of blue, the ark and the veil covered with blue. What a sight. The ark was the most precious of all the furnishings. It represents the heart of God, the Shekinah glory, and the Christ typified in the Old Testament. It was covered with blue. This is the heavenly color. And this represents the place where the Lord came down to man. This is the center attraction of Israel on the move, journeying through life in the wilderness. So you notice that uh, they are to always uh, put in uh, center or with distinction uh, the glory of God. 
God was always in the, in the center and the promotion of His glory, that His honor, right, always comes first. Right? Uh, so when they march off, right, it is God who is leading them. And that's very important because Israel is a theocracy. Israel is ruled by God. Right? God uh, is the one who created the nation of Israel. And God also is the one who will lead the nation uh, in all its endeavor. And the tabernacle represents the center right, of uh, the presence of God, right, providing uh, the needful uh, direction, instruction, and presence. Right? The presence of God is important, right? right? God on, not only in the ark, we, we said before, God only, not only provides the instructions of His law, right? they are going to be a nation, and so His law represents the constitution for the nation. Right? God provides them that the, the wherewither, uh, how a, a nation is to be run. So the constitution of a nation. And also, you see the provision of the manner, which we said earlier, how that manner was a symbol of the care of God for them. That God is the one who is caring for them, taking care of their, all their needs, right? The manner came down from heaven daily for six days a week. On the sixth day, they would have double portion while they were going through the wilderness. So where was or where is the source of our blessing? God wants us to know. And you see in that march, God provides that direction so that everyone can see. The people of Israel especially must see right, that this is God who is leading the nation of Israel. And so there is a provision here right, in all the work of the tabernacle uh, to describe the presence of God uh, with His people. Right. So this elaborate procedure this elaborate procedure of the building of the tabernacle right, uh, provides for us very different aspects uh, in which God uh, meets with His people right, in the, in the uh, setup of the tabernacle. Okay? And God wants us to know uh, that indeed um, uh, there is a work by which uh, God draws us to Him. And, and uh, Spence make a good note here on the brazen altar, uh, the brazen altar that's found in uh, page 3 of your notes, right at the top, page 3. Uh, the brazen altar is viewed with the necessity of having the ashes removed before Israel travels the journey and then first cover it with purple, with the outside covering once again being the badger's skin. After all that we have done is completed, there are ashes to remove. Right? And he gives this uh, illustration. Right? He says, no person is so godly, but what there is some waste from his works or cinder from his burning zeal, we cannot travel the road unless we are sure we have removed these things. Also, the purple covering upon the altar. Purple, of course, is a combination of red and blue. Uh, two previously mentioned colors. Uh, this represents both the sacrifice and the origin of Christ. When these two are brought together purple, we see the color of royalty. Christ was born of royal lineage as the incarnate son. But he was always the royal ancient of days, being God himself. The brazen altar is the place where the sinner comes and find Christ. Right? Is that ugly piece of furniture and the sacred monstrosity of the tabernacle, the blood, the ashes, the animal, the smell, the grating, the horns, all represent of our Lord in His righteousness for the sinner. So, you see, the furnitures of the tabernacle are significant. And we uh, focus here uh, a little bit on the brazen altar. Why? Because it was on the altar that the animals were sacrificed which typifies right, the finished work of Christ that will come 
right? How many years later? Um, well, Israel in the wilderness is 1,500 BC. So Christ coming 1,500 years later. So the work of the tabernacle typifies right, uh, the work of Christ upon earth. And the altar is a description right, of how uh, sins were dealt with, our sins were dealt with. Right? How we need to realize that um, sin is a great a menace right, in the life of man. And sin has to be dealt with and God has dealt with it right, with the offering of uh, himself right, upon the altar, right, the offering of for sin is a truly a marvelous way right, by which man can draw nigh to God. So out of all the offerings, huh, you see the ark right at the at the at the innermost uh, sa uh, sanctum of the sanctuary, right, the holy of holies, to the uh, to the a brazen altar right at the court. Right? For us to come to God, you see that journey involved, right? that the need to, for cleansing, the need that we, how we can draw near to God. It is when our sins have been uh, forgiven right? through the righteousness right, of the sacrifice right, that, was, that was able to uh, represent us and to take away right, the guilt of sin. And uh, God wants us to know right, how sacred it is, uh, the work of uh, God in the midst of His people. Right? The sacrifice, the brazen altar, Okay, so the priests, in the first verses we have seen, right up to page, uh, up, to, up to verse uh, 14, uh, they, they were to uh, take down all the items, wrap them, uh, and then the Kohathites, right, the Kohathites were the privileged people to bear, right, to, to bear the, uh, that's page 3, uh, right at the bottom there, page 3, the Kohathites were privileged to bear these precious things. Uh, but only the priests were honoured to cover these sacred things. The Kohathites were not allowed to go in and see if these precious things were covered. They must remain without until it was announced to them that it was covered. Right? Those who go in and see what happened, they would die. Right? Her God would struck them. Right? The sacredness of coming to the, for sinful men to come to the presence of God. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, you, you realize that uh, there is a, there is a, uh, a sign that says no trespassing. Why? Because it is for your, uh, for your protection. Right? Here is the presence of God. Right? Men with their sins, they cannot approach unto God. And so uh, we need to, in the approach of God, right, we need to know where we stand right, in His sight. Uh, so the Kohathites were a group of people whom, of the tribe of Levi, as we have said earlier, uh, who would be involved uh, in the carrying of the items of the tabernacle. Right? Uh, the Kohathites were amenable to and under the authority of Eliezer, right? uh, one of the two sons. Uh, Remaining, remember, two of the sons of uh, uh, Aaron were struck dead, right? Uh, Nadab and Abihu. Uh, why were they struck dead? We have mentioned before. Yeah, because they were drinking, right? They were drunken, 
and they offered strange fire when they came to the tabernacle or when they were at the uh, altar of incense and immediately God struck them. Right? And it was a very sad day, very sad day. Uh, but God provided uh, Aaron with two more sons, Eliezer and Itamar. So Eliezer would be in charge of uh, ensuring, right? ensuring that the items uh, are wrapped, the priest would properly cover them, and then uh, transferred to the Kohathites, right, who will be the ones who would uh, carry the items in the journey. And so you see how well organized uh, this nation is under God. All the instructions are being given. The people of God, under God, is well taken care of. Each one has a sacred role, right? and every role is important in the sight of God. Right? Uh, the one covering, uh, the one who is covering, and the one who is uh, uh, the the one who is covering. Yeah, the uh, hot. Eh? Yeah, the one who is covering. Okay, okay. Yeah, the one who is covering. Who does the covering and the one who is who does uh, all the other things? You you see that each one bears a very important role, right? None can be excluded. Each one is important, and each one who does his work faithfully, right? God will, God will, God will bless. Right, just a minute. Uh, right, so we were mentioning right, concerning the work of the Kohathites, how they uh, were to they play a very important uh, role uh, in uh, ensuring uh, that the that is that uh, the nation is able to move forward each time someone to carry and, and you notice that there are more than two million people <laughs> big group right? and they, each one has to be properly uh, each one is uh, counted right? and each one is given a sacred task by God Matthew Henry uh, applied well he says we have here a second master of the tribe of Levi. And that's found in uh, page 3, right at the bottom of your notes. Uh, As that tribe was taken out of all Israel to be God's peculiar, so the middle-aged men of that tribe were taken from among the rest to be actually employed in the service of the tabernacle. Who are... Uh, who are those? Well, for the Levites, those who serve in the tabernacle, uh, they are of the age from 30 to 50 years old. 30 to 50 years old. So it is in the prime of their strength. Right? 30 years old, our Lord Jesus began his ministry. From 30 to 50 years old, uh, they would serve. Right? But the Levites uh, serve uh, only from... Uh, 30 to 50 years old, right? So uh, the males in the other tribes, uh, uh, there's an error there, it, it's 20 to 50 years old, from 20 years old to 50 years old. But for the Levites, it's 30 to 50 years old. Okay, there's a difference. Uh, there's a difference. For the, those who are serving in the, uh, uh, in the tabernacle, right, um, the preparation process was longer. Right? Those who are drafted into the military from the age of 20 years old. But for the priest, right, you notice that slightly later. For the service, uh, Matthew Henry uh, rightly observed, he says, for the service of God requires the best of our strength and the prime of our time, which cannot be better spent than to honour him who is the first and the best. And a man may make a good soldier much sooner than a good minister. 
they were not to be employed till they were 30 years old. So in the army, 20 years old, they are drafted in. Eh? But in the priesthood, only 30 years old because till then they were in danger of retaining something childish and youthful and have not gravity enough to do the service, to wear the honour of a Levite. They were entered as probationers at the age of 25. So Numbers 8, 24 tells us uh, that 25 years old, uh, they began to prepare. They began their training right, as, a, as a Levite, serving in the tabernacle. And only 30 years old, right, they begin uh, in this work. Right? Uh, during David's time, there was more work to be done at 20 uh, they were drafted in, uh, the Levites were drafted in, but they must be five years learning and waiting right, so to feed themselves for service. So they were brought in, but they were prepared right, before they would do the work. Right, 1 Timothy 3, 6 says that you be careful uh, uh, that... Uh, a man may not come into office who is a novice, uh, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. And it is very real. Uh, a, a person needs to uh, be uh, mature uh, spiritually, uh, be able to uh, overcome uh, certain uh, Sins, uh, so in their life they would have already understood uh, how pride can come easily to overtake a man uh, uh, when he is given uh, much, uh, in a sense, uh, much honour and he's not prepared uh, how to handle it. And so you see, um, in all this, uh, the Lord uh, teaches us and uh, shows us uh, the way by which uh, um, uh, He uses uh, men for His honour and glory. Okay? So they are discharged at the age of 50 from the toilsome part of the service, uh, uh, Matthew Henry writes, particularly that of carrying the tabernacle. For what is the special service to which they were here ordained and which there was most occasion for a while they were in the wilderness. They began to enter upon old age. They were dismissed in favour of them that they might not be overtoiled when their strength began to decay. So 20 years good service was taught pretty well for a man. 20 years right, to give the prime of your life to God uh, for His service. You would notice that this was uh, how uh, men were drafted uh, into the priesthood uh, so that they would work uh, the work of uh, the tabernacle um, and uh, you see the preparation and you see God leading them. Right? So for the Kohathites, you would notice that uh, their service uh, would end when the camp is being pitched. Okay? So after they pitch, pitch the, the, the tent, uh, when everybody stops, uh, that's where they rest. So when they are on the move, uh, they would be the one working. Okay, so you see that uh, there is a way by which uh, God organizes uh, his, uh, his work. Right? Uh, each one assigned different areas uh, and are given the task in the time of their strength. Uh, so you can see... Uh, this was how Israel, God led the nation of Israel. Of course, later on, you see the nation of Israel said, we don't want God to lead us. But if you were to look at how well uh, God 
organize all things. Uh, you will notice that uh, Israel uh, would have continued well with God leading them. You see, God giving them all the instructions for life. Right? The same for Adam and Eve. Right? When God uh, made them and placed them in his sanctuary in the garden, they would have dominion all over all his creation. And if they would simply uh, enjoy the favour of God, the privilege that God has placed them there, it would have been such a, a wonderful, blessed uh, um, dominion that they have. But they ruined it right, when the serpent came to tempt them. They want to be like God. They want to be wiser than God. And that's where men fell. Right? When we don't want God to lead us, when we don't want to walk in the will of God, uh, which is the best. You see, God designed it for us. For the Kohathites, right? this was what God would give them to do. Uh, would you do Right, the task that God has assigned you to do with cheerfulness, with gladness, right, with faithfulness. Right, you, you notice that each one of us, right, God would uh, uh, want that we would serve Him. Right? And as we think and consider our service for the Lord, right, you would notice that indeed uh, we are not involved Right, in the uh, in the task as as we as as Israel would uh, in the physical tabernacle, right? uh, Hebrews ten verse one says, and it's found in uh, page five of your notes, right at the bottom, page five, uh, Hebrews verse ten says, for the law having a shadow of things, good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect. Right. So it's a shadow uh, of the good thing. What is the good thing that is to come? Well, the Saviour, the Saviour, God Himself, tabernacling on earth with men, uh, Emmanuel, God with us, the coming of the Lord, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Uh, and so when He comes, right, the fulfilment of His uh, work by which He would lead um, sinful men to be reconciled to the Heavenly Father is complete. Right? Complete. And uh, before the ascension of Christ, right, uh, he gives the Great Commission to his people, right, the church that was gathered uh, in the upper room, and he provides the instructions by which we can serve him. Right, here in the time of the New Testament, as his people, Covering and carrying uh, is a description of the various work tasks that God gives to His people or God gift His people to do. And you would notice that they are to do it. Right? Uh, and each, you know, the tribe that is assigned, the Kohathites, you notice that they would devote the larger part of their life the good years of their life in that service. Uh, would you despise that service if God would uh, call you to a certain task that you are to do and He wants you to give the best years of your life for this? And you would, by doing so, bless the hearts of many people by that faithful service that God uh, uses his people to do and the Lord 
rewards us uh, uh, in due time for all the good that uh, he enables us to do for his own honor and glory. So do not despise the work of the Lord. Do not despise uh, his blessing that he provides for us. Uh, enjoy it. Love it. And be blessed by it. May God uh, help us. Amen.